today's video, we're going to explore NASA's Opera data in the Worldview tool. Here we are in the homepage for Worldview. This is going to be the welcome note that we're going to close out of. Uh, and we want to explore the Opera data set. So let's start by adding that layer into our map. On the left hand side, you will see an orange button that says add layers. That will pop up this window. Um, and so we can search in a search bar um, by the keyword Opera. And it looks like it found the data set that we're interested in. So let's add that as a layer. Next, you might say, well, I don't see anything. Um, one thing to note about Worldview is that it defaults to today's date, uh, as you can see here at the bottom in the timeline. Um, so if we uh, grab that and slide it back to, let's say, um, mid-April, um, we're going to look at springtime water over California as a use case. Uh, you'll start to see um, the different uh, opera coverage across, uh, across the globe. Um, let's zoom in to California. You can uh, do that any number of ways. Um, there's also the, the plus minus zoom options. Um, so here we are, you can see the Sierras. Um, and you know that those are the Sierras because if you look over to the left hand side, uh, you will see our uh, added opera data layer. Um, and it has the legend. So you have white for no water, um, dark blue for open water, Light blue is partial surface water. Cyan indicates snow and ice. So those are the Sierra Mountains and, or the Sierra Nevada. Um, and then gray is cloud. Um, there are a number of things you can do with the, with, within this tool. For example, if we go for that particular layer um, and view options, you will see that you can change the transparency or the op opacity of the specific layer that you have turned on. Um, all the way to zero, uh, toggle as much as, as needed to adjust and explore. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit further because we might want to check out an interesting feature. Um, so let's go back here. Uh, again, you can adjust the opacity of the layer as needed. Uh, you can also toggle on and off different um, categories within this layer. So for example, maybe we are not interested in the no water layer. Um, this enables us to see uh, a little bit more clearly um, the, the water bodies, the open water, um, as well as the, um, the snow, for example. So um, another way to uh, flip through time. So right now we are at April 14th. Um, you can also see it all the way to the left at the bottom here. Uh, there's numerous ways to switch through time. You can enter the, the year, the month, the day. You can also flip through through different dates um, and that will change. Uh, it'll display the date, data for that day. Some days um, in certain locations, Opera data may not be available. Um, so you can kind of uh, flip through manually uh, for days if you would like to. Um, but we know we're interested in uh, April 14th to begin with, so let's stick with that. It's got good coverage over um, central coast of California. Next, uh, let's um, explore the use case of the Tulare Lake. So Tulare Lake uh, used to be a lake uh, in central California, um, but it has since in recent years disappeared. However, California had a very wet winter this past winter in 2022-2023, and so um, the Tulare Lake has reappeared and you can see it um, here with my mouse where I'm hovering. Uh, to help you further orient yourself, you can also turn on, um, for example, place labels layer. And that will um, show, that will label certain locations. So you can see the city of Fresno, um, Tulare um, and other regions. So next let's, um, let's do a comparison over time. So you can do a comparison with the, the same data set um, and different times, or you can do two different data sets at whatever time you determine. So if I click start comparison, that will allow us to define what um, our initial, what, what are the two different um, times that we, we would like to compare. So to do that, uh, there are multiple ways to do it, but you can use your mouse to click on the A. Uh, let's say we do on April 14th. So that's good. 
Um, and then we're going to move the B over to, let's say, what a beginning of June might look like in terms of the, um, the Tulare Lake. And then for some reason, it didn't update it, but let's try that again. It should. Um, here we go. Um, so if you use your mouse and uh, grab this arrow to toggle between um, A and B, which is April 14th and June 1st in this case, you can see the changes in um, not only surface water in this case, which is the dark blue, but also the snowpack uh, in the Sierra Nevada in California. So that's really helpful for exploring the data set um, across time. You can again change the opacity um, of each of these layers, A and B. Uh, you can do that by, for example, selecting A in the upper left here and adjusting the transparency of that layer if it's desirable. Um, then you can go to layer B and do the same, um, you know, turn on and off different layers and levels of the data set. Um, so it's another way to kind of add complexity to your comparison. Um, you can also add other data sets. So let's say uh, maybe we want to also look at soil moisture as a reference. Um, we can go ahead and um, add a layer just like we did with Opera. And instead of Opera, let's say we are interested in the SMAP Soil Moisture Level 3 data product. So I'm gonna type in SMAP Level 3. Um, and on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna uh, check the Soil Moisture box as SMAP offers several data sets. Um, and I'm gonna select this uh, nine kilometer passive daytime uh, data set that goes to present day. So I'm gonna add that. And now you can see that on the left-hand side, we have um, the upper layer for April 14th. And then on the right-hand side, we have this map for June 1st. But let's, um, let's do the same dates for uh, first map as well. So I'm gonna drag the B date all the way to April 14th. So now uh, we're comparing the same date. Um, so we're looking at both the upper data, so the dark blue surface water. And then you can see that bullseye in the SMAP data as well. So these are just a couple of ways to compare and explore uh, single data sets, multiple data sets together. Um, let's exit the comparison. Um, and let's say that um, you would really like to go ahead and further explore um, the upper data in your own preferred tool. So um, we can do that by going up here in the upper left under the data download and click on that. And it gives you the option to download, to select which data set you want, would like to download. Um, so here we have both the SNAP data that we brought in as a layer as well as Opera. Let's say that we're primarily interested in the Opera data. So we're gonna select that. And I also wanna set an area of interest. I don't want the whole globe for that date um, I want a specific region. So we can use this bounding box uh, and drag and sort of drop um, this to select the area of interest. And now that we have that ready, um, oh, excuse me, we can go ahead and you can see that the number of granules has, has reduced to only nine. So now we know that we're only gonna select for this region of interest and for the time that we want. Clicking the orange button that says download via Earth Data Search will do what is called a smart handoff to the Earth Data Search portal, uh, which is uh, NASA's uh, hub for all Earth observation data. And you can see that our um, bounding box of interest and temporal uh, April 14th have been preserved and carried over to this tool. Uh, in the map, you can pan over and see that um, the region of interest that we are in, have been looking at in worldview is also highlighted in here, just to confirm that indeed we have the right selection. And it gives you a little preview of the data set and the different granules or files um, that cover that region and time. You can see that again, uh, we have those eight matching granules for the region of interest and time. Uh, clicking the green button to download, will take us to an additional page to do any additional configurations if available for that data set. Uh, in this case, we're gonna do a direct download. So we are gonna to continue to download the data. 
And that will take us to um, the final page, which will give us our download status. And here you will notice once it fills up, um, it, once it populates, you will see the links for each of those um, Opera data uh, granules of interest. Um, you can, if you would like just a single granule, when you click on the link on the directly, um, you'll have to log in with your Earth Data login, which is free to sign up for, and it downloads to your local computer. Uh, and it's gonna, um, if we go back to where we were before, I'm um, not sure why this happened. Uh, let's try to refresh the page. Or maybe go back, that's a better option. Um, so as I was saying, you, you can click on the link and that will download the individual link. You can also copy th this entire list of links and bring that into your script to say, these are the things that I want to work with. Um, you can also click on the tab that says AWS S3 access, and that will provide you with the S3 buckets where the data is um, archived and located. So if you are someone who would like to work directly in the cloud with the data, um, you don't have to download, you can do a direct access to this S3 location for these particular um, data sets and access it that way. So um, that was a little bit of exploring uh, Earth Data Search. Uh, I'm sorry, exploring Worldview and Opera Data. Uh, and that concludes today's tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.